Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come, come and take the stage. I'm not in the vessel. After you finish, take the glory. For it pleases me to see your name glorified. Father, we thank you for a day like this. We give you honor and glory. You alone are God in this house. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. This morning, the man who led the prayer made a mention of our inability to participate when we're praying. We do not participate because we don't know why we pray. This morning I have a message that says war in the spirit. Part one. So everything that starts in the physical is starts from the spiritual. Giga Giga Center is founded as a deliverance church, a prayer ministry. So most people that come here or are members really don't know why we pray the way we pray. We have a reason to pray. We are ordered to watch and to pray because we do not know when the thieves are come. If we look at Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, Men ought to always pray and not to faint. Men are always to pray, ought to pray and not to faint. The reason we pray the way we pray is because of this. Can somebody turn to Matthew chapter 13, starting verses 24 to 30. <coughs> yeah, Matthew 13, 24 to 30. So this point. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to gather, to go and gather them up? But he said, No less while you gather up the tares, you also approve the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my bowl. Amen. Amen. That chapter, starting from verse 24 through 30, really do explain the reason why we ought to pray the way we should. When we come here, if we realize what has happened to us, or why, who we are, then there's no reason, or there would be no reason for anybody to remind us how to pray, or to pray. There would be no reason for us to look back and front and left to see what the other person is doing. Because we would be committed to why we can do and what we can do. I don't know if you know about the Nepalese. If you remember, 
in the Old Testament, the sons of God came down to the earth and met with the fair daughters of men. In that unholy union, there were byproducts of that unholy union. Those were not human beings. Those were Satan, his children. They are still living in this world today. Some of them are among us. Some of them are in our villages. Some of them are in our homes. Some of them are a place of war. So every time of our life we have been bombarded, we are under attack by the enemy. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered and violence, so we take it back. This is why we pray. We pray because when we were sleeping, somebody, someone, came and served us in our field, in this earth, in our family. That is why we should always pray violent prayers. That is why we should always worry in prayer. These Nephilim are called watchers. The two categories, the watchers and the gatekeepers. They are descendants of Satan. They are still inhabiting this earth. As a matter of fact, in the most high places, in government, in business, in the entertainment center, most of the hard places in this world are being occupied by those who serve Satan, by the children of these people. See, God is a spirit. God is a body to operate on earth. That's why he said it's only the God Son. The Christ came in the form of a human. You and I, we are the children of God. God needs us to operate here on earth. Satan needs a body to operate on earth too. And he has his agents here on earth. These are the natural. The deities. Most of them are human. You see them day in, day out. At your places of war, while you are driving, some of them are driving past you. Some of them are your next door neighbors, but you don't know who they are. This is why you must always remain vigilant. This is why we pray the way we pray in this church. For everything that happens to you in the physical, first of all, happens in the spirit. Amen. During the part two of this message, I will explain that to you. I will show you some examples. I'm very glad this morning that Brother Mecca touched part of it because of the question about Job. If you do not surrender to God, Satan will surrender you to himself. If you do not surrender to God, then Satan will surrender you to himself. Most of us, we, are, we have been surrendered to Satan, but we don't know it. It is true our prayers and fasting will God give us a revelation about what is going on in our lives. It is then that we gird up and fast and pray. The pastor has called for a 40 day fast. Why do we do that? Christ told his disciples that this alone, this cannot be healed by prayers alone, by true fasting. That's why we fast here. 
That's why we're deliverance ministry. So most of the time when I come and I see people not praying, when I see people not fasting, it's not a joke. We are in the battle for our life. Remember who you are. God created you for a purpose. You have a, a destiny to be fulfilled. And if you do not fulfill destiny, what would you tell your God? That's a book written by our pastor, sir, from Dash to, I'm forgetting that, from Dash to Dash. If you go through the graves, yeah, you will see a lot of graves there. Many people there, laying there, die without fulfilling their destiny. Yeah. This happened because they were not aware of who they are. This happened because they did not fight for their right to live, their right to prosper, their right to be free. Satan can surrender you to himself. But as a child of God, you can stand up and fight. And you can only do that by using the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit is not in bed, the word of God. You pray back God's word to him. His promises. His covenants. Can someone turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15? Genesis 3. Amen. Why do we allow ourselves to be bruised by Satan? He has continually bruised our heel. But we have not taken that authority given to us by God Almighty to bruise his head, to crush it. The ability has been given to you already. So there is a warning between the children of God and said that he's not happy with us. So he's doing everything he can to make sure that he corrupt as many as he can, that he sow his seeds in many of us, knowing that when he does this, this will only lead us to damnation. Mm -hmm. The number of the children of God are continually daily being decreased instead of increasing. Because we have given to him that authority that God gave us, right that we handed it over to Satan. We are not using it. We are not breaking through. We are suffering. Revelation 12, 14. And we are, through Christ, we have become the seed of Abraham. Let's look at Galatians 3, 29. Galatians 3, 29. And if he be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. 
Amen. Amen. Say, and ye, if ye be Christ, right? Yes. Yeah. Then ye are Abraham's seed. And there's according to the promise. Amen. There is a promise made to Abraham by God. And because of this, Satan has constantly been pursuing, trying to destroy the children of God. If you look at Genesis 1, 28, after God created the whole world, he gave everything over to man. He says, pursue, possess, dominate, and multiply. Can somebody read Genesis 13, verse 15 and 16? Abrahamic anointing, Abrahamic blessing, Abrahamic appointment. This is why Satan is rising up against us every time. But what are we doing? The children of God, we're not doing anything. We are folding our hands. If you are going into the battle, you are this. Get prepared. Do what you have to do. The authority has already been given to you. The weapon has already been given to you. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. It has already been given to you. All you have to do is use it. Use it and you will be free. Use it and you will be healed. Use it and you will be delivered. God has always been there, ready to deliver us. Ready to give us victory. But he would not bring this victory to your door. You have to open the door and reach out and get it. You have to fight. Yes. That's why Giga Christian Center is what it is today. Most people come here, they cannot stand the fire. And they go. But if you know why you are here, if you know what Big Exorcist said is all about, his mission is a deliverance ministry, a prayer ministry, to deliver us from the hands of the chains, from the cages of the enemy. Back in your home, in your village where you come from, there are men and women who live in their growing old, they do not die. They are out there causing havoc, pouring libation against you, going to their shrine, doing all sort of things to defer or to cancel or to rubbish the glory of God upon your life. And you sit there here doing nothing. Better you have been told. It's not that you don't know. The authority has been given to you. You can rise up. You can fight this battle. And you surely will win. Amen. Because the victory is already guaranteed Amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you have to take it and fight. And glory will be yours. Amen. Remember that you were created in the image of God for his own glory. And his word also says that he shall not share his glory upon your life for any man. All assurances have been given unto you. Rise up and destroy the spirit of lukewarmness, the spirit of cowardice, the spirit of fear. And be bold to take 
the bull by the horn. For surely victory is yours. Yes, you might be bruised, but that's part of warfare. Most of us come here, the prayer is going on, and they are not participating. They are lukewarm. There is what they call um, something casualty, I forget about it in the warfare. Unintended collateral, thank you, damages. Be not a collateral damage in the house of God. And how can this happen to you? Because you come in, you remain cold. When mass prayer is going on, we are bombarding heaven. We get hard in the spirit. Those powers that are holding us start living. Amen. When they start getting out of your body, and if they see the cold body, they take it immediately. <laughs> this happens. You have to know the things that happen in the spirit. Be informed. Use the weapon given to you. Let's look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It's a covenant. It's an agreement. He has given you all the power. The power is within you. You have to rekindle it. You have to awake it up. Call for that power and it will come forth. And that power, Christ will give you the enablement to go into this war. It's a custom battle. We shall fight this fight all the days of our lives. It never ends. A lot of people ask themselves, when is this going to end? It shall not end until we go to meet our Lord. Because the Satan is always worrying to make sure that your name is not written in the book of life. And it's your duty to make sure that he does not succeed. That your name remains in the book of life. Fellow worshippers, let us rise up in our spirit. Let us dedicate our prayer life. Let us commune with God all the time. He has done everything for us. I mean for us. In John 16 verse 33, he said there are trials and tribulations. He said that he cheered because he has already conquered it for you. So he has done everything through his blood on the cross. But the rest is left with us to fight. Now we come to church and sit down will not take us to heaven. We have to open our mouth. The Bible says God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. When you're praying, try to move yourself out of your body to your spiritual self. The ordinary eye would not see it, but you praying, the Holy Spirit will see that. You will then start to communicate with God in his own language. When that happens, you won't even look around and see who is speaking at you. You won't do any of those because you're busy talking to your father. 
So learn how to pray. Learn that you have a battle. Most of us, the only battle we know is the one we are fighting physically. But we forget to say that before that fire starts, it's already begun a week or two in the spirit. But you can move to the spirit. God needs a body. And this earth, he sent his son. You are the descendants of Christ. You are also the body for God to use. Satan is here on earth. He has his agents. He has bodies. So when you want to fight spiritually, you have to move into the spirit. Before you sleep, call on the spirit of God to envelop you. To so make a hedge around your home. You pray and bind on everything that's not of God in that house at that time. And then you can sleep peacefully. Because during peaceful sleep, that's when you regenerate everything that is damaged in your body. Then how can that happen if Satan and the surgeons that they are beating you up and down? And you woke up the next day and rested. So this is why we do what we do here. We walk in the spirit. Because of time, I'm going to continue this next week. I'll bring it to an end. And for today, I thank you for inclining your ears unto these words. Amen. And I pray that God Almighty will bless you with these words. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand up, please. Let us pray. What are two prayer points? Repeat after me. Every door. Every door. That's giving Satan. Access to my life. Access to my life. Catch fire. 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 And we will carry it, and we will enjoy it, 
Gal Christian Center, 4416 Monroe Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. Gilgal Christian Center, a deliverance and prayer ministry.